we're talking about Donald Trump's cell phone. Yeah. Which he uses. People know about this? He uses it to tweet and kafefe. <laughs> we'll talk about that later in the show, too. Talk about kafefe. Don't worry. Is that how you pronounce it? That's how I pronounce it. Don't kafefe on my coffee. Cafefe. Don't kafefe on my face. I, I, I feel like it was a harder, for me, it was like a harder V. Like kafi V or Kafifi? something. Kafifi? It makes anyway. it even worse. It's just bad. Anyway, so check. Donald Trump used his cell phone to compose that magnificent tweet that uh, turned into a tre- trending hashtag and pointed out a lot of problems, one of which is the one we're going to discuss now. This is kind of tangentially related, but it's actually something that um, a lot of Americans don't even realize Donald Trump is doing. And this is just a testament of uh, how much of an idiot Donald Trump is and how much uh, he okay. actually doesn't care about cybersecurity. All right, so here's my thing, I, and I'm going to... I'm going to chastise you, and then we can go back to the story. Me? Yes. Okay. The president is not an idiot. He's very how smart. Do you, how do you describe what I'm about to talk about? I think he is, I think he doesn't understand basic protocols. I think he, he there's a clear dereliction of duty. I think he's sloppy. I think he's a lot <laughs> I mean, of, I think but I, he's not, I, like, I mean, he's a smart guy. Like, I mean, let's just be real. I mean, he has two degrees from the UPenn. He created, whether he did it legally or illegally or slumly or c- dirty or cleanly, he became, he came close to a billionaire and he managed to beat the one of the most qualified people ever running for president of the United States. So he's not an idiot. He's I actually rather what, smart. I don't know. He schnookered America. He fooled us. I don't know. I mean, I guess. You call him a fool here. or a prankster. I would agree with you that one would describe a con man who's very good as smart. I will give you that. Yeah. Fair like Bernie Madoff, he might be an evil guy, but he's actually really smart. He's probably smarter than Donald Trump. Anyway, okay, so check this out. Donald Trump, we're talking about his cell phone. So many Americans don't know this, but Donald Trump actually uses his personal cell phone for presidential business on a regular basis. Bad this idea. is majorly problematic. So like Richard talked about, the, the first surface issue is this does not really mesh with the standard decorum and yes. etiquette of a president when communicating with other world leaders. Now, the way that it has worked, you know, even prior to cell phones existing, was there are scheduled calls and interactions with other government leaders. Often there's someone present to take notes. Um, it's either done in one of a few secure lines um, that we have. There's one in the Situation Room. There's one on Air Force One. There's one, one in his Oval. in the Oval Office, one obviously. In the President's study. In the study, and there's one uh, on his bulletproof limo thing. I forget what it's called. The Beast. The Beast. <laughs> there's one in the Beast. So, the reason that we use secure lines is because it is, in fact, very easy for hackers to hack cell phone lines. What Donald Trump is doing right now is not any more secure than the cell phone that Richard Fowler or I are using to send out tweets, to text people, or to call people. Now, to make things even more bizarre, Donald Trump is actually handing out his personal cell phone number to world leaders. So instead of saying, like, let's schedule a meeting, have your people call my people, he goes to, you know, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau or whatever, Trudeau, um, and he says, here, like maybe on a weird, like a napkin or something, and he says, this is my cell phone number, call me anytime. And, and there's a folksy kind of appeal to that, to him saying like, I, I don't care, just call me, it's my, you know, you'll get me anytime. But national security wise, it's absolutely idiotic, right? Now, uh, President Barack Obama was the first president to carry a cell phone, but the device that he carried was much different than Donald Trump's yeah, personal cell phone. Yeah, it was limited phone. communications on that phone. Like the president, because of security purposes, can't really even like email me per like if if Barack Obama or Donald Trump wanted to email me personally, he really couldn't do it because there is he is the leader of the free world and right. thus he sort of lives in a in a bubble, a bubble of security well, to would, protect the country. That's what should happen. But that's right. not what's currently No, happening. he just busted the bubble wide open. Donald Trump could download the Gmail app on his phone, make an account, and send Richard Fowler an email right now. Absolutely, and that's problematic because that means, here's the thing, there's, a, there's two ways of communication here. Right. So a hacker could be hacking me, and they could use his email to get it to him, and then boom, they've hacked into the White House system. And that means all of our national security is up for grabs. 
Right. I mean, it's, to, it's a huge mess. And we already know, America, here's what we already know, because whether we like it or not, our idiotic candidate for president of the United States, Hillary Clinton, showed you that these servers can get hacked. Right, and right? I imagine I mean, the she State had Department, at least a little bit better security than this. Yeah, and I mean, the State Department, government agencies have been hacked. Which should have security. And so the fact that he's willy-nilly handing out, that means he can have a conversation with Angela Merkel about our, you know, nuclear uranium supply. Sure. And ISIS can be listening, and next thing you know, in well, the middle of bum, bumfuck of Mississippi, ISIS is getting our nuclear supply. Right. It's really that possible. So this is problematic. That's the point that we're trying to make here. One of the other things that makes this really interesting and kind of unprecedented is there is a law that was passed in 1981 in response to the Watergate scandal. This is called the Presidential Records Act. Now, this law requires that the president and his staff preserve all records pertaining to their president's time in the Oval Office. So that means no shredding of documents, that means documenting all of your phone calls, it means no deleting emails, it means no secretly burning things in the White House bathroom. Like, you, you have to keep everything. And with Donald Trump having his own private cell phone, that leaves room for Donald Trump to delete text messages, to have secretive phone calls that are not recorded in back rooms somewhere. These are all things that are unprecedented. And this America, now I'm not going to go there, because I already chastised progressives for going there, but this is America is what makes this Russia investigation so problematic. Sure. Because if Jared, if what these leaks are saying are true, and there's indeed a back channel created between the Russians and the President of the United States, Maybe that back channel is just his cell phone, honey. <laughs> Maybe Putin just has his cell phone number and they text every night. Yeah. And it's. And Putin said, super We chill. need you to disrupt world order. And he I. says, Got it. Got Kafefe. it. Kafefe. I'm night. pulling out of the Paris Agreement today. <laughs> Done. <laughs> I'm going to that chastise to NATO tomorrow, the same group, which is the counterbalance to you. I'm uh, moving on. Moving on. So there you have it, folks. Um, that's an issue that we wanted to bring up here on The Fowler Show because many people don't know that Donald Trump is even doing this. Like, when you think about what the president does, I mean, what I thought would happen for, you know, no matter how crazy the president is, you think that there are systems in place already that are good and work well, that smart people have come up with, that help the president to do his or her job in a safe way, right? Right, and I think you also expect that the president has, like, here's the thing, you have the experience, anybody who knows anything, you're smart, you're just as smart as the people that you have around you. And every president, since I can remember, well, since the dawn of time, besides George Washington, the first president, yep. has always had people working for them that have done this job before, right? In case in point, you think of, say, like a David Gergen who is a CNN commentator now and a Harvard professor, but he worked for seven presidents. Right. Why do you think that is? The it's reason being- institutional knowledge, it's right? Thing, institutional knowledge and decorum. David could be like, well, this is how we're supposed to do this here. Or There's at least nobody. you can say, this is how we used, used to, to do, do it. it. And Thank you. here's a recommendation on changing it. And that is why right? even, even President Obama kept on the Secretary of Defense from the previous administration, though he disagreed with everything the previous administration had done, because like we need continuity. Right. This president has thrown all the old secretaries out. He's thrown out <laughs> all the assistant attorney general, all the assistant attorney, U.S. assistant attorneys, and the White House is being run by a group of people that have never ever even set foot in the White House. Yeah, it's a group of people that don't even know how to turn on the lights. No, and it's obvious because <laughs> they would know about the 1981 Presidential Records Act and know that he's violating it. And they say, there should be someone on staff here to make sure that we are all in Hello. accordance with this law. But you get into a situation where, like, Trump is clearly violating this act right now, but how do you even enforce it? Who this is going to enforce it? I mean, I hate to bring up Bernie Madoff again, but I just finished watching the, <laughs> I Bert, watched that too. the Bernie Madoff <laughs> movie on HBO. On HBO. Yeah, it was good. Robert De Niro and Michelle Pfeiffer. And what you realize is that Bernie was, do like, Bernie and one other guy was engaging in a multi-billion dollar Ponzi scheme and nobody around him knew. Right. And let me bring this back full circle. Jared Kushner, a person <laughs> of interest in the Russia ties. Sure. And maybe it's just Jared and the president, and nobody else knows. How, I mean, how would you know? And that, that's a perfect example, right? Like, everyone says, they're so successful, how could this be happening until one day? It happens. 